Good morning, or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're watching this film. Um, welcome back to National 5, not yet. Welcome back to 4th Level Chemistry. Um, I have got a video for us today, and uh, the contents of this video are fairly obvious. They're right in front of your face. By the time you're finished watching this video, you will know how to build a chemical formula. I thought I'd put my glass of water in as a prop here, because uh, formulas... You see them popping up from time to time, don't you, all over the place, O2, N2, CO2, and of course, H2O. What do these numbers mean, these tiny wee numbers mean? Where do they come from, and what do they tell you? By the end of this, you're going to know. Um, so, in order to build a formula, first of all, you have to know the elements that are in your compound. You also, well, chemists being slightly lazy, we decided to put shortcuts, of course, um, and we gave each element a symbol. So you will need to know the symbols um, for your particular elements. Uh, I'm not going to tell you them all, of course. You can go and Google a periodic table. Um, I might even put a link in the assignment to the official one that we use for National 5, which has got the names and the symbols for all the elements in it. So, you need to know the symbols for your elements. Uh, that's number one. Secondly, you need to know something called a valency number. What on earth is that? Well, we'll come back to that perhaps later on. Let's just stick with being able to use them today. I'll be happy with that. So you need to know the valency number for both of your elements. I did say it's how to build a chemical formula, but because we're just uh, in third year at the moment, We'll keep things relatively simple, and we'll say it's a chemical formula containing only two elements. So just two elements. None of this carbonate or nitrate nonsense where the ending means there's also oxygen hidden there. We're just going to stick with some, some nice simple stuff like aluminium chloride and so on. So how to build a formula, chemical formula for just two elements. You get their symbols, then you need to get this valency number for both of your elements. Where does this number come from? Well, the good news is it comes from the group. Just in case you need a little bit of revision, that's the problem with chemistry, isn't it? Everything builds on everything else. Uh, just in case you need a quick revision of that, I'm hoping if you were to pause this video right now, you could tell me what a group of elements was on the periodic table. If you can't, I'm just about, spoiler alert, to tell you the answer. A group is a vertical column. So it's an up and down column of elements on the periodic table. Uh, that's what a group is. And the groups were numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this is gripping video isn't it? 8. Or 0 sometimes, depends uh, how old you are. Because I'm a bit of an old fart, I call that group 8. I think they're called uh, group 0 nowadays. Um, so there's the group numbers. Let's put an example of a typical element in each group. But as I said, if you've got a periodic table, you can go and look it up. So lithium, for example, that's... Uh, by the way, just a wee thing. See the symbols, guys? Um, just two seconds. Uh, so lithium, uh, group two, will say magnesium, Mg. The symbol, by the way, guys, I know it looks like I'm being really pedantic, but the first letter has to be a capital letter. So, for example, for magnesium, it's M, capital M, and then a small g. Otherwise, you might lose the marks. That'd be a shame. Um, so, lithium, magnesium. Um, let's go with uh, aluminium. Uh, group 4, carbon. Um, group 5, uh, phosphorus. Group 6, oxygen. One of my favourite ones. <laughs> uh, group 7, fluorine. And group 8, neon. Although, group 8 are not going to be playing today. They're not joining the party. You'll see why in just a second. Um, so these are the groups, and you need a valency number. Now the valency number applies to every element in that particular group. So everything in group 1 will have a valency of 1, and then everything in group 2 is 2, 3 is 3, 4 is 4, nice and simple so far. 5, we start to go down again, the valency number is 3, 2, 1. So everything in group 7 will have a valency of 1, and of course group 8 would have a valency of 0. I don't even bother putting that in. 
because group 8s don't form compounds, do they? So they're not going to play today. Um, right, so that's the first part of this challenge. How to build a chemical formula. You need to know the symbols and you need to know the valency number for each of your two elements involved. And where do you get these magical valency numbers? You get them from this little table here. Feel free to uh, make a wee copy of this if you want on the side, or you can keep it in your head if your memory is half decent. Um, and I will show you on the next sheet what to do with these valency numbers to make these formula. By the way, if you are coping with all this electron carry-on and the layers and so on, you might just be realising, I'm hoping that you're realising, that that number here is the same as the number out of, of outer electrons of everything in this group. So if I can cast your minds back to fluorine here, for example, fluorine has a, an atomic number of nine, and that means it's got nine protons and also nine electrons in a normal atom. We haven't lost or gained any at the moment. These nine electrons are actually set up as two in the first layer and seven in the outer layer. That number there is the same as the group number. That's not a coincidence. It's That's the reason that fluorine is in group seven, because its atoms all have seven outer electrons, so does everything else in group seven, and that is why they all react in a similar way. And that's why they're in the same group, because they all have the same number of outer electrons, and the same applies to across everything. Everything group five, five outer electrons. The valency number here, by the way, guys, um, is actually the number of electrons that you need to either add or remove to make that layer full up. So in the case of fluorine, if we add one extra electron, that shifts up to eight. In the case of aluminium, aluminium's got 13 electrons because its atomic number is 13. So they are two, eight, and three. And the valency number is three because that's the number of electrons you need to remove. But don't worry about that. We're going to keep things simpler than that today, and that's just a throwback to a previous video. If you understood all the atoms and ion stuff, then congratulations, you're doing a storming job. If you found it a challenge, don't worry. Uh, the entire of third year chemistry is not going to be quite as difficult as all that. So we're doing something easier today. It's a nice, easy recipe to follow. Back to what we're going to do, how to build a chemical formula. You need the elements, you need the valency number. What do you do with them? Let's pick an example. I said aluminium chloride earlier on. So let's do the formula for, al let's construct the formula for aluminium uh, chloride. That's a symbol for Al. That's a symbol for chlorine, of course. Now, if we cast our eyes back to this for a second, uh, because I'm incredibly sad and such a geek, I know without even looking it up that aluminium is in group three, as I showed you here earlier on, and I know that chlorine is in group seven. Um, you can have a quick glance at your periodic table, of course, if you're not as geeky as me, and you can find the location of these. Now, that means that chlorine has a valency of 1, and aluminium has a valency of 3. So, let's go back to this page here. Step 1. Write the valency numbers. Can I just pause this for a second? Sorry. Uh, let's do that. So we have aluminium. That had a valency of 3. You notice, by the way, that number is actually below the line. That's called a subscript. Um, if you're typing this on your Chromebooks, if you want to type it, you can type your answers for your assignments. If you want to write it, it might be slightly easier, and then take a picture of it. Um, there's a keyboard shortcut for that. Uh, which I believe is, <laughs> let me just go and check so I don't give you the wrong one. It's control and comma, folks. So if you were going to put this down to what's called a subscript, you can highlight your three, type of three, highlight it, and then press control and comma, and it'll shift it down to subscript for you. So that's the valency of aluminium. Chlorine's valency was one. Right, so that's stage one. Great. Stage two, swap those valency numbers round. So swap the valency numbers. Let's do that. We keep aluminium and we keep chlorine. And this becomes a 1 and this becomes a 3. Great. And there's a third step. Now, I'm not sure how good you are at maths. If I was to throw the phrase simplifying fractions at you, 
if you know what I mean. I'm hoping you know what I mean. Let me give you an example if you don't. Simplify the two numbers if possible. That's not always possible. Simplify the numbers. I'll put a question mark there because that's this is not something that always happens. So we've got aluminium chloride and we've got one and three. Uh, now, what I mean by simplifying is if you had something like two and four, you know, two over four becomes one over two. Well, if you had a compound of X and Y and your valency numbers are two and four, then you can simplify that to become one and two. That's what I mean. Can't do that here, of course. One and three don't simplify. So that's the end of the game. This is our final answer. Aluminium chloride is Al1Cl3. And as I joked earlier on, chemists always try and find shortcuts and you can actually skip the ones. So that just becomes AlCl3, aluminium chloride. We're done. That's pretty much the task for today, guys. I, I would like you to be able to write some formulas for simple two-element compounds. And that's the steps, guys. You go and find the symbols. I'm not going to tell you what they are. You can go and find them yourself. You need to find the valency number for each of your two elements. Where do you find the valency number? You find it according to the group that it's in. Um, and what do you do with these valency numbers once you've got them? Well, you write them down, you swap them over, and then you simplify if you can. Is that as complex as it gets? Not quite. Sorry about that, folks. I thought I would actually just fire this here. So what was I saying? I was saying that, yeah, you get the valency numbers for your two elements, you swap them over, um, you simplify them if you can, and then we can skip the ones. If you want to put the ones in, by the way, nothing wrong with writing the ones in, it's just that we don't. Life's too short. Um, so you could do any compound, couldn't you? You could do boron and lithium, you could do phosphorus and calcium, and you can do manganese and oxygen. Oh, dear. Manganese isn't in a group. Oops. How are you supposed to get the valency number for any of these transition metal elements in the centre? They are not in a group. Look, one, two, miss a few, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero. The good news, ladies and gentlemen, is the question has to tell you what valency number to use because there is no way to get it from this periodic table. So the question would say something like, What's the formula of iron 3 chloride? Yeah, let's not use chloride. Let's use something a bit more advanced than that. Let's use oxide. So iron 3 oxide. Let's say I wanted to know the formula of this compound here. Iron is... That, by the way, this is the this is the page from the data book that I'm going to link the PDF file for you guys. This is page four in your data book. It's a handy one because it gives you the name and the symbols for all these elements. Uh, I'm also going to set you a second wee challenge to do with your name. See how close we can get. So uh, we want iron and we want oxygen. So iron is Fe and oxygen is just O. The reason it's Fe is because it's one of our really, really old known about elements. Uh, and it's ferrum, it's the Latin name for it. There's a few weird ones like that. Like copper is not CO, it's cuprum. Uh, potassium is K for callium. Um, that's why we've just kept them as a hangover from a long time ago. So iron and oxygen. The valency of iron is going to be, it's not in a group, but that's okay because that is the valency there. Roman numerals, Roman numbers, and it's three. One, two, three. So iron three oxygen is in a group, it's in group six. And according to our table here, everything in group 6 has a valency of 2. So oxygen's valency is going to be 2. So that is my stage 1. Write the valency numbers down. Done it. Let's swap them around. Fe2O3. Great. And stage 3 was an optional one because it doesn't always work. Can you simplify 2 and 3? No, you can't. Which means that is our formula. So that's how you include transition metals, guys. The question tells you the formula. Oh, good news. Happy day. I'm going to stop at that, uh, and you can go off and try the assignment.